Alright, good afternoon Dito. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesdays with Dr. Joel Lopez, MD. And I'm excited, Dito, for the topic today. Are you? Yes, super. Uh, so today we're going to be schooled uh, about testosterone and hopefully uncover all the myths that surround this human human hormone. Say, marami mga misconceptions about the testosterone human hormone. So we'll learn that with uh, Doctor Wellness himself from Doctor Wellness himself, Doctor Joel Lopez. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, Dr. Joel. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon Joel. And welcome to, uh, to all of you who are watching in the replay or in the live stream. Please put your questions on the comment section, whether you're joining us live or um, during the replay. And we have an exciting topic today. This is a topic that not a lot of people discuss. Parang medyo tabu rin siya. I think it's very relevant. A lot of our generation are talking about this as well. <laughs> Dito. <clears throat> right. So um, actually, there's uh, hopefully we uncover all the misconceptions and learn a lot from Dr. Joel today. Because there are many misconceptions that uh, or, uh, testosterone is, um, drives a lot of uh, emotions in the male. But we don't really know that uh, it's actually part of the female hormone uh, selection ba, doc? And what are doing? How do you call that? Yeah, it's a hormone that's also found in women, but in really lower doses, lower levels. Okay. I guess yes. uh, we'll get rolling. Thank you, doc. We'll give the floor to you. Yeah, so this is quite a long topic. So if we don't... Uh, we won't be able to share it in an hour then maybe we can continue it next next time but okay anyway um, our topic today is on testosterone so um, testosterone is a male hormone but it's found also in women so testosterone has a lot of functions and I would like to enumerate those so before we go to the screening questions um, that we ask our clients to find out if they have testosterone deficiency. So um, let me find those slides quickly. Okay, so uh, these are the symptoms first of uh, testosterone deficiency. So they include low libido or low sex drive, poor morning erections, erectile dysfunction, even a depressed mood could be due to low testosterone. Fatigue could also be due to low testosterone, decreased vitality, cognitive impairment, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, abdominal obesity, hypertension, of course, um, inappropriate uh, body composition like less muscle mass and decreased body fat, also osteoporosis, and dyslipidemia or high cholesterol levels. So these are among the symptoms of low testosterone. And if you just go over them, you would think that a lot of these symptoms are treated symptomatically. So most doctors do not screen for testosterone deficiency. But actually testosterone deficiency or the decline of testosterone actually begins at the age of 20 by about 1 mm -hmm. to 1.5% 1, 1. per year, or that's 10% wow. per decade. So by the time a person is like 70 years old, your testosterone level is actually had half of that of your youth. So just some tidbit there. So okay. um, according to the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, these are the main symptoms of low testosterone. So hypoactive sexual desire, reduced nocturnal and morning erections, reduced sex-induced erections, 
and delayed ejaculation and reduced semen volume. So these are the questions that we normally ask our clients and it's called okay. the Adam questionnaire. Adam is otherwise known as uh, androgen deficiency in the aging male. So if the person asks or answers yes to number one and seven questions, that means that they probably have low testosterone and we need to pursue this further. So these questions um, include, do you have a decrease in libido or sex drive? And number seven, are your erections less strong? So those are the two main questions that we ask our clients. But these are also other symptoms of low testosterone. That's number two. Uh, do you have a lack of energy? Third, do you have a decrease in strength or endurance? Have you lost mm -hmm. height? Have you noticed a decreased enjoyment of life? Are you sad or grumpy? Have you noticed a recent deterioration in your ability to play sports? Are you falling asleep after dinner? And finally, have you been, has there been a recent deterioration in your work performance? Doc, so, um, at yeah. age usually, nag-manifest yung ganyan. What age? What age? Oh. Yeah, before, uh, men usually would experience the symptoms by the age of 60. But nowadays, we're seeing younger men experience this. And because of all the um, environmental pollutants that we get from, of course, from everywhere nowadays, these environmental pollutants act like hormones in our bodies. They're what mm -hmm. we call phenoestrogens. So they're causing a hormonal imbalance in our body. Mm -hmm. And okay. then, of course, um, food, like, for instance, uh, meat that's been injected with hormones. Mm -hmm. Those could also end up in our body. So that's another possible cause of hormonal imbalance in men as well as women. Okay. How about smoking, though? Smoking. Yeah, smoking does affect uh, hormone levels as well. And I could go over that uh, in a little bit. But um, okay. anyway, if, we end, if you answer these questions and you got like uh, one in seven, in, uh, yes what would happen is that the doctor would do further testing. They may do either a hormone uh, test through the blood or the saliva or the urine. In the Philippines, what we do commonly is a blood test. And that's usually run at about eight in the morning because that's when we expect your testosterone to be highest. So ideally between eight and 12 blood draw. So we expect it to be highest at that time. If it's low, and then you're symptomatic, then you're a possible candidate for testosterone replacement therapy. But uh, we could also go over other things that could correct testosterone deficiency. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to undergo TRT or use testosterone. There are other things that you could also do to improve your testosterone levels. Okay. So, Doc. Uh, uh, going back to what you said, did you say that it's uh, the, the surge of testosterone in men is uh, from 8 a.m. to 12 noon? Yeah, that's when you expect it to be the highest. So that's why we do the blood test at that time. Mm. So, of course, we have to do the basic interview and also do a physical exam. So if there's a loss of body hair, an increase in breast size or gynecomastia, a decrease in size mm -hmm. consistency of the testicles, scrotum, penis size, and a decrease in peripheral vision. These are the things that you could see when a person has testosterone deficiency. Okay. So the normal value is 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. So uh, you don't have to wait till your level is 300 before you actually begin treatment because some people may have low levels like in the 500s, but they may be symptomatic already. And just um, one thing that people should know, sometimes the first sign of testosterone deficiency is a heart attack in men. Because usually men don't complain uh, because we got this machismo attitude. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, we don't go normally to doctors until we really feel bad. But again, since testosterone is also important for cardiovascular health, sometimes, again, the main symptoms could be a heart attack in men. And so sometimes, Anton, is, yeah, so Anton, this is what happened to me. Exactly. Uh, talaga? Okay. Mm. Yeah, and that was several years ago, Ditto, right? Yeah, so I took the same test that uh, see Dr. Joel is actually describing. And uh, mm-hmm. I, f- I failed on almost all the points. So, uh, and it, it was confirmed that it was actually the, the heart attack was uh, caused by uh, depletion of my hormones. Ah, wow. Okay. So, can you take that test anytime lang? Ganon? Or it needs to be prescribed? And how much usually would it be? Yeah, it needs to be prescribed by a doctor. But the best time uh, to have it done is between 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Okay. Yeah. So, right. aside from testing for testosterone, ideally, you want to do a comprehensive test for other hormones as well, including your estrogen. You want to also check mm-hmm. for hormone binding globulin, prolactin, LH, and FSH, just to get a more comprehensive picture of what's going on. Okay. So there are two kinds of testosterone that exist in the body. One is called a bound testosterone, and the other one is free hormone, free testosterone. So the total mm-hmm. testosterone consists of the albumin bound, as well as the one bound to sex hormone binding globulin. So only 2% of testosterone is free. And actually this free testosterone is the one that acts at the cellular level. So this is what we really want to test for, is the free testosterone. Okay. So, um, I mentioned earlier that these are the ways to test for it. So it's done through the blood, you could also do it through the blood spot, as well as saliva, and also urine panel for testosterone. But here in the Philippines, we all, we usually do the serum testosterone levels only. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So these are other, um, well, DHEA is another androgen. So we also test for it when we do a comprehensive male hormone profile. So these are the normal values. So our target here is the upper third of normal. So we don't um, just look at the normal levels because normal values are based on statistics. So let's say they take nine out of 10 people, then they establish that as normal. So the Mm -hmm. normal values for those who live in the States and as well as those who live in Europe are different. Because in general, Mm -hmm. Europeans are generally healthier than Americans, so that their normals are actually higher than Hi. the American population. Ang Asians, no? Yeah, it depends. Um, those who have adopted a Western lifestyle or diet would tend to have more of that uh, American wow. values. Yeah, so here in the Philippines, we have a lot of like fast foods and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of Western type of diet. So possibly ours would be similar to the values of that of the North Americans. Okay. Yeah. So these are the other tests, but since they're not available here, I'll just go, uh, let, let's just go through it quickly. Um, this one say, says that our free testosterone levels actually begin to decline as we age because the sex hormone binding globulin tends to increase. So that explains why you see more of these symptoms of uh, andropause or low testosterone in aging male population. So there are different ways to crank up your testosterone levels naturally. So, All right, Pani and Doc. Yeah, so we'll discuss each and each of these. So uh, it has to do with production, transport sensitivity and detoxification of the hormones. So first we begin with production. So how might we increase production of testosterone? Number one there is through weight loss. Wow, so okay, for that, I got weight loss. Yeah, right. when you lose body fat, the, um, 
aromatase mm -hmm. enzyme becomes less active, so there won't be any conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And we see a lot of obese men who have higher levels of estrogen, and that is because of the hormone aromatase. Yeah. Another way to increase your testosterone is through exercise. So exercise has to be done properly. So ideally weight-bearing exercises, ideally every other day, and you gotta rest between those days because it's actually during sleep that your body repairs and regenerates itself. Then uh, nutritional support, there are certain amino acids that do help improve your testosterone levels, such as L-carnitine. I think mm. I mentioned that last time, but uh, L-carnitine is an amino acid that aside from being a fat burner, it also increases endogenous testosterone production according to an Italian study. Then sleep, of course, helps with improving your testosterone production and stress management. With stress management, what happens is that when you're under a lot of stress, your body produces more cortisol. And cortisol, by the way, is a similar, well, it also comes from the parent hormone or parent molecule, which is cholesterol. I could go back to that slide Hold on a second, because uh, this would show how uh, cholesterol is actually a precursor to the other hormones. And that includes your uh, cortisol and testosterone. Uh, I can't find it. Oh, there it is. So if you look at this slide, uh, all these sex hormones come from cholesterol. Okay, so cholesterol is not all bad. We actually need cholesterol. Mm. Okay. Uh, but um, anyways, cholesterol is a precursor to the hormones. Cortisol, which you could see right here, it's also a precursor to testosterone, estrogen, and other hormones like DHEA, pregnenolone, progesterone, and aldosterone. So if you're under a lot of stress, your body would tend to make more of this um, hormone, cortisol. We call it cortisol steel, like steel or um, rock. So cortisol steel. So <laughs> if you're under a lot of stress, you make more cortisol, and that affects your level of testosterone. So one thing okay. you do when you have a lot of stress is to uh, correct it, and then that would improve your testosterone levels. And uh, that, again, is another topic, when <laughs> this uh, cortisol and stress. But anyway, I just wanted no. to show you guys. Quick question. Uh, when you said that uh, cholesterol is important for boosting the for boosting the for boosting testosterone, um, wh what kind of cholesterol is that? Is that the LDL or the HDL? Yeah, what I mean is that um, testosterone is derived from the parent hormone cholesterol. So oh, okay. as far as cholesterol is concerned. You have good or bad or oxidized or uh, non-oxidized non form of cholesterol. So you want to look at the ratios of the cholesterol. But um, do you know that the normal or the total cholesterol about 10, 20 years ago was about 300? And they keep on lowering the numbers just to medicate more people. And that's sad because if you lower cholesterol too much, it could lead to other problems. So, yeah, it could lead to like hemorrhagic stroke or pancreatic or liver cancer if the cholesterol is too low. So it has to be at a certain level. What level is that, Doc? Yeah, so uh, right now the normal for total cholesterol is between 200 to 240. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, the ratio, again, you have to look at that as well. Okay. Yeah. So going back, um, so both a low calorie diet and bariatric surgery actually help um, to improve your gonadotropins as well as your testosterone. So androgen increase is greater among those who lost more weight, those who are younger and non-diabetic. Body weight loss is associated with decreased estradiol, and that's because the enzyme called aromatase 
is less active if you have less body fat. So this uh, shows how 52 week treatment with diet and exercise with or without transdermal testosterone among men with METS, metabolic syndrome and diabetes. So if you just do the diet and exercise uh, without testosterone, you would see some improvement in your testosterone, but it would take a long, longer time compared to diet, exercise, as well as testosterone. So you get uh, quicker results. So, so how about okay. detoxification? Will that help? Uh, yeah, we'll go to detoxification uh, later. Okay. Yeah. So regular high intensity exercise has been shown in multiple studies to contribute to keeping a man's testosterone at optimal levels. So that's why it's really important to exercise. That's something that you can do for free, right? <laughs> so yes. in both yes. the younger, <laughs> but we're all lazy. There was a statistically significant increase in testosterone levels after exercise. So there are micronutrients that actually could contribute to androgen, uh, optimal androgen levels. So studies show that you have a micro, micronutrient deficiency, especially in vitamins A, D3, E, zinc, and selenium. It actually contributes to low testosterone as well as low sperm production. So uh, any of those, if they're, if they're missing, could actually lead to uh, male hormone dysfunction. If you look here, vitamin A actually regulates germ cell production or differentiation. And it could lead to the generation of both the cycle of seminiferous epithelium and spermatogenic wave. So a deficiency in vitamin A could actually lead to, to low sperm count. So this is something that you don't hear much from your, um, from your fertility uh, doctors. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, zinc, which we already discussed last time. It's involved in like 200 metabolic processes in the body. So it's not only important for immune system health, but it's actually important for male hormone health or sexual health. So they found out in a study of 37 infertile men with low testosterone levels and low sperm counts that if they were given 60 milligrams of zinc daily for 45 to 50 days, their levels of testosterone actually improved and their sperm count actually rose from 80 to 20 million. So that's how wow. important your zinc is. And it's important to note that we don't store zinc in our body, so we really have to get it from our diet or from supplements. Okay. Um, and the natural uh, sources are hung. Yeah, uh, oysters and uh, oysters. certain seeds like pumpkin seeds. Um, pumpkin. We have this thing here in the Philippines that if you like um, had sex one day, you have to eat balot, right? You have to eat uh -oh. balot. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and also oysters. So oysters are a rich uh, source of zinc. I don't know what is sin balot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could uh, uh, educate me on that part. Yeah, because they do okay. recommend it after intense uh, sexual activity, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this slide tells you how combined treatment of cadmium exposed animals with selenium and zinc actually uh, would show. Uh, a more significant decrease in plasma and testicular cadmium concentrations. So cadmium is a toxic metal. So uh, you could actually get it from cigarette smoke. So that's how smoking would actually affect your testosterone levels. So okay. it uh, should actually um, um, motivate more men to get off of smoking because the cadmium in cigarette smoke would actually cause uh, hormonal issues. 
as well as okay. erectile dysfunction. So hypogonadism is a major manifestation of zinc deficiency. And although it is rare, it should be considered in patients with poor growth and hypogonadism associated with skin changes and anemia. Uh, we lost uh, Dito. Is Dito still there? Wala, no, wala. No, wala. Okay. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead. Yeah. yeah, zinc therapy is actually good for, especially is uh, significant for those who are going undergoing hemodialysis. So this mm -hmm. patient is given zinc for about six weeks. Their sex hormone levels and zinc plasma levels actually did improve. So mm. this is something to consider. Okay. Doc, yung zinc, can you get it from multivitamins or it needs to be zinc talaga? Yeah, there's actually some zinc in some multivitamin mineral formulas, but it's not enough. Sometimes you, there's only like five milligrams in there. You mm. actually may need at least 60 milligrams of zinc daily. Per day. Per day, yeah. Uh -oh. Important yung zinc nga, no? for boosting immune system, for testosterone. Yeah, and actually a, a lot of other things, including hair growth. So men who have uh, premature uh, hair loss may actually just mm -hmm. be zinc deficient. And we are actually seeing it in younger men nowadays. I see men in their teens who are actually beginning to lose their hair. And this is, again, wow. because of a dietary or a nutritional issue. We're okay. not getting zinc from our food anymore. And not just zinc, but a lot of other minerals. Because, again, minerals. a lot of our food is not that um, nutrient-dense anymore. Okay. So, uh, next thing is vitamin D. So, mm -hmm. the male reproductive tract is a target tissue for vitamin D. So... If you lack vitamin D, it could actually lead to low testosterone. And I've seen this already in my clinical practice. I had a couple of clients who had uh, problems getting pregnant. And this was mm -hmm. like for three years. Um, so what I did was just check their um, nutritional panel. I found out that their vitamin D levels was in the single digit. So vitamin wow. D ideally should be like at least 75 or more. So what I did was corrected their vitamin D deficiencies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't mess, mess with their hormones, but eventually they got pregnant. So uh, imagine if and something as simple as vitamin D could actually okay. correct problems like infertility. Okay. Yeah. And, and of course you can get it from the sun, no? Yeah, or you, do you need it from exposure to sunlight, and mm -hmm. with our uh, with the lockdown, we could still actually get it from different fatty fish like sardines or salmon. Oh, salmon. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, with vitamin D, its impact on low testosterone. So vitamin D use was noted to have a significant increase in total testosterone levels. It increased bioactive testosterone as well as free testosterone levels. So vitamin D could actually improve your total testosterone levels. So men with sufficient vitamin D had significantly higher levels of testosterone and free androgen index and significantly lower levels of sex hormone binding globulin. So that's why vitamin D really is so important not just for immune system, but for sexual health as well. Mm -hmm. So the next one has to do with transport, conversion, distribution, and interaction of testosterone with other hormones. So as we age, there's an increase in sex hormone binding globulin and also a decrease in testosterone due to adiposity or excess body fat or an increased uh, body mass index. Okay. So this is what happens. Um, sex hormone binding globulin is a transport molecule. It's usually increased during pregnancy. So 
uh, in women. Uh, it's also seen in hyperthyroidism. When you have excess, exogenous estrogens, these are the ones that we get from our food. Uh, low fat diets, low protein or vegetarian diets. Aging is also associated with increased sex hormone binding globulin. When you do have cirrhosis or hepatitis, HIV and the use of anti-convulsants. And these are the things that actually uh, decrease your sex hormone binding globulin. So when your sex hormone binding globulin is low, that increases your free testosterone levels. So you see that when you actually use some androgens or even progesterone, insulin, diabetes and obesity, IGF-1 or growth hormone, exercise also lowers sex hormone binding globulin. The hormone prolactin does that too. When a person is hypothyroid, when they have nephrotic syndrome, and these are herbs like a uh, nettle root actually lowers sex hormone binding globulin and the omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils like uh, EPA and DHA, whey protein, that's why a lot of bodybuilders use whey protein and then certain glucocorti glucocorticoids. So a uh, clarif uh, clarification doc, uh, you need the SHBG to be high or low? Yeah, we want it low. We want the sex hormone low. low. Yeah, because if it's high, it would bind on with it would bind more of the testosterone. So there would be uh, less free testosterone that gets into the cells. It will be so deep. It, okay. So if it binds the testosterone, it will be processed out of the body. Um basically when you have a bound testosterone, it's not available for use by the cells. So it doesn't do mm. much metabolically. So it's the free testosterone that gets into the cells that's really important. Okay. Um, so here it tells you that low protein diets, which we see in the older population, may lead to elevated sex hormone binding globulins and decreased testosterone availability. And that's why it's really important to pay attention to your protein intake and that's what we mm -hmm. do with um we actually recommend a paleolithic diet for those men who are doing testosterone replacement therapy and paleolithic diet primarily consists of meat and veggies and less of the carbs or less of the grains like rice bread pasta okay. um i did mention about omega-3 fatty acids so they mm -hmm. actually lower your sex hormone binding globulin. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing to take the omega-3s. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sensitivity. So cellular sensitivity to hormonal signal. So you basically improve androgen receptor sensitivity when you exercise. Again, that's why exercise is really important. And then nutritional support with vitamin A. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's again, it's the importance of uh, exercise. Then finally with detoxification or excretion of the hormone. So aromatase and estradiol metabolites from testosterone, 5 alpha reductase and DHT and cadmium, basically if your aromatase enzyme is very active, the, your body would form more estrogen. And basically, you see that in people who have excess body fat. That's why it's really important to um, improve your body composition. Then 5-alpha reductase, an enzyme, if it's too active, would also lead to increased DHT, which has been implicated in hair loss, as well as prostate enlargement. And then I did mention about cadmium, which is toxic to the gonads or the testicles. So uh, you get that from cigarette smoking primarily. So that's mm. another motivation for men to stop smoking. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So what happens when you have excess estrogen? And these are seen in men who have 
uh, in, like um, big bellies or uh, yeah, excess visceral fat. So you see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No. Yeah. So you no, see no. gynecomastia, um, or in um, in those uh, who go to the gym, they you you hear it as like uh, like uh, men and men uh, men <laughs> men's breasts, like a you know that term man boobs man boobs man boob. yeah then you call it like man boobs <laughs> yeah so you see that in men with uh, excess estrogen then yeah, they yeah, have yeah. increased uh, risk of metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance and also low libido if you have excess estrogen so aromatase inhibitors these are just some examples so you could also get it from like uh, lignans from flax seeds, isoflavones from soy, resveratrol, grapeseed extract, green tea, quercetin, stinging, nettle root. Uh, the most popular here is chrysin. Um, it's something that's available in a capsule form for those who don't want to take the prescription uh, aromatase inhibitors such as uh, anastrozole. That's the the most common aromatase inhibitor that we give to men. It's quite effective and um, it's uh, rather safe. So I, most of my clients who are on testosterone replacement therapy have been using anastrozole. So other aromatase inhibitors include metformin, zinc, and progesterone. So madaming okay. choice actually. I'm sorry, so, Doc, do we want to inhibit the aromatase so that our... Sorry, I, I didn't get that. So we yes. inhibit the aromatase... Yeah, you so want to inhibit can... the aromatase enzyme because if you don't do that, your body would create more estrogen. Yeah, you, your body creates more estrogen if your aromatase enzyme is very active. And you basically okay. see that in people who have excess body fat. So is that okay. clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So testosterone metabolites. So uh, there's excess DHT, which has been implicated in alopecia or hair loss, as well as BPH. So uh, to prevent this, we may give uh, five alpha reductase inhibitors, but there are natural ones such as saw palmetto, and this is available in like your health food stores. They're good for mild uh, to moderate a prostate enlargement. What is that? No? It's called saw palmetto. It's um uh, it's a berry basically. You get the an extract mm. of that berry, and um the Dose that you use is like 300 to 500 milligrams per day. Okay. Yeah. So these are the other five alpha reductase inhibitors. So they include krill oil, omega-3 fish oil, stinging nettle root, quercetin, green tea, flax seeds, soy isoflavones, progesterone, again, chrysin, also popular than the prescription medications that lowers this uh, DHT are either finasteride or dutasteride. So those two are available by prescription. I rarely recommend those because they could actually cause some side effects. So normally I use this natural 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Okay. So what are the lab goals to optimizing testosterone? You want to lower your sex hormone binding globulin. So that okay. means more free testosterone. You want to decrease your aromatase enzyme, meaning less okay. estrogen. You also want to decrease your 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And that would lower your DHT. And then you also want to test and optimize your DHEA 
pregnenolone, LH, and FSH. Okay. So these are just uh, like recommended dosages on the different um, bioflavonoids as well as um, medications. So now we go to uh, testosterone replacement therapy. Okay, uh, Doc, uh, before you yeah. go there, so in green tea, uh, that's good for testosterone, essentially. Tama yeah, by improving your liver function, basically. That's how mm -hmm. it improves your testosterone. Because uh, okay. you produce less sex hormone binding globulin when you do have green tea. Okay. Okay. So now, for those who cannot wait, to improve their testosterone levels for months or years, they could actually do that by using uh, testosterone in injectable form. So we have either the enantate, cipionate, or propionate form. Uh, the medium acting ones are enantate and cipionate. Propionate is short acting, that one has to be done daily. Whereas the medium acting ones could be done like once or twice a week. So this, um, there's another popular testosterone in the market called Sustenin. It's composed of short acting and long acting, short acting, medium acting, and long acting forms of testosterone. <coughs> and that's, as you can see here, it could be given every two to three weeks. But in my practice, I use mostly the um, medium-acting ones. Which is this um, one. Nebulo. Which is the cipionate and the enantate, um, the first two. Those are the medium-acting uh, ones. Then uh, this nebido is long-acting. It's given every three months. There's also other forms of testosterone, like um, so what things. we call uh, testosterone pellets. This is mm. basically a, like the size of a grain of rice and implanted under the skin. It's basically uh, absorbed slowly into the system. Um, there are some men who prefer this, but most of my clients still do the injections. Just uh, mm. FYI. Yeah, mm. and for those more who don't effective. want to do, pardon me? Is it more effective, yung mga uh, injectables? Than, yeah, the injectable uh, is more effective. We don't recommend oral testosterone because they could actually damage the liver. So it's no longer in use. Yeah, it's called methyl testosterone. So another option would be transdermal testosterone, which is uh, applied to the skin. It's available either as a patch, gel, or cream. But the tendency for topical testosterone is that it converts more to DHT. So you see more hair loss with this uh, type of testosterone treatment. So we generally don't recommend transdermal form of testosterone. So for the, the one that's uh, subcutaneous, uh, the one that's like uh, the size of the green of rice. Yeah. When you, implant that, when you implant yeah. that, is it... Sabi mo three months, eh, no? Is it going to be like time release? Yeah. So you don't have to remove it because it's actually gradually reabsorbed. I mean, reab it's gradually absorbed into your system. So with that, doc, the one that you implant, do you still need to take the estadiol to um, balance off your estrogen? You mean the aromatase inhibitor? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 you still need to do that. The only advantage is that you don't have to poke yourself every week if you do the pellets. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so this is the oral form of testosterone. It's called methyl testosterone, and it's hardly used anymore. I don't know of any doctor who's recommending it, at least not that I know of. And these are sperm. Okay. These are other things that may um, raise your uh, testosterone. But I, I don't really um, recommend much of these. 
But anyways, uh, so side effects naman ng testosterone. So no cardiovascular risk. Actually, it helps improve your cardiovascular function. Okay. So, That's good. Um, yeah, it has an anabolic um, property. So it may raise your red blood cell count. That's why every time I recheck a person's testosterone, I also check for their hematocrit levels. And if their hematocrit level is high, I may recommend therapeutic blood draw which is actually okay. good for your liver too. Uh, infertility could happen. I, again, this is possible when you use um, testosterone chronically, like nonstop. So sometimes I uh -huh. give my, my clients like a break. Uh, so sometimes they, they do it for six, month and, six months and um, stay off of it for one month. Otherwise, they could also use something called HCG. So this HCG would actually increase the endogenous production of testosterone. Is uh, This uh, HCG doesn't cause your uh, testicles to shrink. So um, this is another way of uh, raising your testosterone. No, the HCG is the one that you inject subcutaneously, right? That's self-injection. Yeah. Yes. I remember I took that. Yeah. Um, then a rare side effect of chronic use of testosterone is smaller testicles. Uh, some men are not bothered by this. It's more of like aesthetics. But um, for those who are bothered by it, <coughs> it's actually reversible. Mm. So uh, once you stop the testosterone, it would go back to its previous size. And then another way to prevent mm. it is by using HCG along with the testosterone. So, Doc, just to be clear, men actually like smaller testicles so that, so that it's, uh, it's nicer to look at? No, no, no. I mean, it's a side effect of a chronic use of testosterone. So, no, for some men, they're not aesthetic. bothered. The, some oh, men yes, are not bothered by smaller, te smaller testicles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Figure this one... Liver damage only from the oral form of testosterone. That's why we don't recommend it. Okay. Acne is possible. BPH. Um, there's no evidence of um, testosterone causing BPH. Actually, it's the estrogen that causes prostate enlargement. That's why it's really important to um, use some aromatase inhibitors when you're on testosterone replacement therapy. And then gynecomastia or men boobs may decrease due to fat loss, but may increase due to aromatase enzyme. So benefits of uh, high testosterone is that it helps relieve depression. This is based on a Harvard study. It improves nice. memory and concentration. It improves sense of well-being. It may lower cholesterol. It improves libido or sex drive. It actually mm -hmm. makes your heart stronger. It improves sleep. It helps improve uh, your body composition. And it also gives you a chiseled look. Wow. And it mm -hmm. makes own density. Yeah. So now then Joe Lane. Yeah, so madaming ano, benefits on testosterone. Wow. Okay. So that, um, is that like halfway of your uh, your presentation? Uh, I do yeah. have more, but uh, I think that's that's it. Uh, that's we it. could actually do the Q and A now. Yeah. Uh, so, Robbie, what are your questions? Robbie's tuning in. Maybe put your questions there. So, Doc, um, question lang. Um, for testosterone, is there a certain type of doctor that you should go to? Yeah, so um, <laughs> yeah um, in my case, because I did study anti-aging and regenerative medicine. So okay. um, possibly you could see an endocrinologist if you're interested in doing testosterone replacement therapy. But um, again, sometimes they just base it on the normal values. So if your normal mm -hmm. values... If your levels falls within normal, even though it's like 300, 
you may not be treated because sometimes um, they only look at the numbers. But of course, there are more open-minded or forward-thinking physicians. They may not necessarily be endocrinologists, but um, anti-aging or integrative medicine specialists. These are people that you may want to visit. So an integrative medicine doctor has some background in um, complementary, alternative, or holistic medicine, just uh, FYI. Okay. Um, ito na yung question ni Robby. Okay, maybe we can... Ang dami yan tanong. The first question, is it true that lifting weights increases testosterone? Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> and then, and then yun muna, first question muna daw. There's an honest question there, Doc. Does uh, masturbation help increase testosterone? Um, does masturbation help increase testosterone? Actually, um, according to some studies done by the Taoist, um, supposedly if you... Um, I'm sorry, my dog is like... I need to... <laughs> uh, give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, na-excite yung... Na-excite yung dog na dun sa topic. Si Robby kasi. Number, question number two. Anyway, yeah. ano question number three niya, Anton? What was question number uh, three? Ah, okay. What, what are the signs, signs that we are... All right. So, si Rob kasi, he just... Uh, yeah. I think he just uh, plugged in, no? Yung dinescast ni Doc yan. You see it, parang kayong gynoc, ano ba yan? Yung sa man boobs, you'll see man boobs. And then uh -huh. yung uh, increase body weight, that's another thing. And yung, uh, uh, what else pa ba? Yung, the, I remember when my, okay, this is a ano, uh, side story. Uh, habang natin na si Doc. I remember uh -huh. when my, uh, my testosterone was really low and my estrogen was high. Mas mukha kong babae. Sa mukha, facial features. So, and uh, I, I, I shared earlier that yung, the first thing that uh, a decrease of testosterone hits is actually your heart. And then, hindi pa natin share ni Doc, but um, also your respiratory system. So, um, when you develop like a cough and you don't know what, the, the source is yung kuminsan it's also a depletion of the of the testosterone in men so I tried everything that they, hindi naman everything yung, yung uh, I did the the injections the injectables and yung um, oral and naka, nakasama yung oral I remember sabi ni Doc and yung uh, I'm back. <laughs> yes, thanks, Doc. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. question <laughs> Yeah, so back to his question. So if a person ejaculates a lot, they, use, they lose a lot of the mineral zinc. So zinc is important for testosterone function. So that's why you don't want to ejaculate like on a daily basis. Unless you supplement with zinc. <laughs> yeah, so that was an honest answer to an honest question. <laughs> real talk, real talk. Yeah, yeah real talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rob, so, not every day, Rob. Okay. Just to uh, be clear. I would say your testosterone is low physically. So, madaming signs. So, number one, Jen, is... Um, uh, Poor body composition. So if you have more body fat and less muscle mass, so that's one sign that you may have low testosterone. And then, of course, uh, other things like if you're starting to have uh, problems with uh, your hair, like hair loss in the on your head, as well as hair loss in your extremities, that could also mean that um, you have starting testosterone deficiency. So... 
Yes. <laughs> you also mentioned, Doc, the, the small testicles. Uh, the small testicles, yeah, that's from uh, too much, uh, I mean, chronic use of testosterone. That's a side effect. Side effect naman yun. Hello? So, uh, is there a food that we can take to increase testosterone? Because he remembers that his hairy legs... Uh, when he started gaining weight, nakalbo yung legs. So, kaya, baka pwede na makainin. So, what are the food again, uh, Doc? Yeah, more protein primarily. Okay. Whey, I remember you said whey is very important. Um, <coughs> whey, uh, protein whey and shakes is very important, Doc. Okay. Paano, Doc, bag ve vegetarian ka? Paano yung protein source? Plant-based. If you're vegetarian, you got to make sure that you try to vary your uh, food intake. Because uh, if you don't, you may end up with a lot of, like, nutritional deficiencies. And that would include um, deficiency mm. in certain amino acids. So that could lead to problems with uh, hormones as well. So, Doc, if you're vegetarian, okay. uh, you said that. Wait, am I wrong? So, when if you're vegetarian, you could take uh, L-carnitine, right? L-carnitine, yeah. and uh, I think you mentioned omegas, DHA, EPA. Yeah, if you're a vegetarian, um, then you may benefit from taking some L-carnitine because, uh, again. L-carnitin would actually help improve testosterone levels, as well as uh, it's also it's a, it's also a fat burner. Mm. Doc, how about niacin? Uh, niacin is good. Um, it helps improve with circulation as well as your cholesterol picture. Mm. But whenever I take niacin, um, I get like flushes. Some I get like. Hot flashes, and then yung nagkaka flush ako, really like a red flush. It's actually, a common side effect of niacin intake. It does that because it's actually improving your circulation. So you oh. like get red or itchy sometimes, but it's transient. Normally, it only lasts for 30 minutes or so. Okay. All right. Uh, let's close this, but can we have a photo again, guys? Okay, one, two, doc, see doc, uh, doc, one, two, all right. All right, uh, what else, Dito? I think we've answered all Rob's questions. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. And um, I know this is a very touchy topic, but um, I'm sure a lot of people will watch this in replay and um, and I do hope it helps a lot of people. No? Yeah. Um, so yung last question na lang, Doc. Yung mga Viagra, yeah. hindi yan testosterone related, no? No. What it does is that it increases nitric oxide levels. So, bali, it improves lang the circulation to the to the penis. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, if someone wants to avoid uh, taking prescription medicine, they could actually take the amino acid called L-arginine. So that would also mm -hmm. help uh, improve circulation to the penis, therefore improving erectile function. L-arginine. Uh, yeah, I think it's oral, no? Oh. Yeah, it's an amino acid. L-arginine. L-arginine, yeah. Oh, tandaan mo yan dito, ha? Ah. L-arginine. <laughs> I want to just... Oops, sorry. Dapat nakamute. Anyway, so, yung ano, uh, Doc, you said that um, the erectile dysfunction, is it, is it also uh, yung physical, that's the way you know that your testosterone is low? The erectile dysfunction. Yeah, uh, people who are not getting morning erections, may have low testosterone because normally men uh, get uh, morning erections kasi. 
Hmm. Okay, yes. ayun. Okay. Ayun. 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 May nagtatanong sa Facebook because nahiya sila mag-ask. Do women have testosterone? I think we answered that already. Uh, meron yeah, certain women, level ito. Yeah, women uh, have uh, testosterone as well. Ang role ng testosterone in women is for libido or sex drive as well as for improving their bone density and energy levels. So they okay. do have testosterone, pero... Um, it's only a fraction that I've seen in men. Okay. So what happens, Doc, kasi na, na-mention mo kanina, um, when, uh, when male has a depletion of uh, testosterone, you can have a heart attack or you can have like problems. No? Pagka sa babae, Doc, if uh, they have like um, an increase of testosterone, what happens to them? Yeah, um, usually, initially, they may experience aggressiveness or irritability. Then eventually, they could have like lowering of the voice, hair loss, and then cardiovascular problems. Same thing with men. If you have too much estrogen, you could have cardiovascular problems. That's why men really have to have low estrogen, uh, low estrogen levels. And you could lower that by, of course, improving your body composition and taking certain aromatase inhibitors. And I mentioned some of the natural ones and prescription ones earlier. Yeah. So next time, Doc, Baka, we can talk about the myths that surround testosterone. I know it's, uh, it's an hour already. Baka, we can talk about those myths because there are a lot Oh, madame. But actually, if we have time, pa tayo, I could show you some of these other slides. Next time, Doc. So, I'm going to, to dedicate a whole show for that because I think that show will be really interesting to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think? Are we good? Yes, we're good. All right. We're good, Thank no? you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank All you. right, I thank you guys. We're able to enlighten everyone. Everyone, see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys.